about three or four in the morning, I woke up and there was a man straddling me on top of me with a pillow over my face. And he said, don't scream. And he made me perform various sex acts. When everything was finished, he told me to go over by the wall and not to move until I'd heard him go out my front door. And I remember just lying there shaking and feeling, I, I, I think I just felt so lucky to be alive. That was February 1997 when Jill Amory escaped with her life. Jill then did something that most women don't do. She dialed 911 and reported her assault. Her case ended up in court. I don't think there's anything that I've done that's been scarier than standing up and going and walking towards the stand to be cross-examined. And I remember swearing on the Bible that I was gonna tell the whole truth and it was only at that point that finally I looked up and made eye contact with him right across from me. And then immediately I looked to the other side of the courtroom where all my friends and family were sitting. Jill Amory was cross-examined for three straight days in a Toronto courtroom. The lawyer exposed every detail of her life. He asked me everything from what was I wearing the night I was assaulted did I take any medications? He knew that I'd been hospitalized in the past for depression. That came up a lot. He asked me about my past sexual history and what sexual acts I had participated in in the past. He asked my financial situation and asked if I had applied to the Criminal Injuries Compensation Board to get money that perhaps I was in need of money from his client. I don't usually get angry, but this defense lawyer made me angry. It made me angry f that I was the victim and the defendant didn't have to take the stand and I did. And after the first day where I felt pummeled, I started to, this fire rose up inside of me. I wanted to fight back. I wanted to be as smart as he was and I wanted to not get tricked, and I wanted to do a really good job. In the end, Jill's attacker was sentenced to six years, one of the harshest penalties handed down for sexual assault in Canada. Still, her trial is more of a cautionary tale. The incident was horrible, and then the court case came about, and I do feel that it was worse than the assault. What happened to Jill Amory is just one example of what survivors of sexual assault go through in this country. When you look at the big picture, things get worse. Almost half a million women in Canada suffer this kind of violence every year. Only 10% ever report the crime to police. And think about this, of those, there are very few convictions. Are we saying that sexual assault is okay in this country? I think as a nation, we're looking the other way. And we've got a huge population of people who are vulnerable and they have nowhere to go and no one to protect them. Sandy Garasino is a lawyer in Vancouver. I think we've got to look at this as a completely failed system. We are using it because we've always used it. To a certain extent, I, I feel like we should be throwing the whole thing out and starting again. And this should be an extremely high priority, not only in terms of justice for the complainants, but as a matter of public safety for other people who might yet be victimized in the future by people who are uh, off the hook today, free as a bird, because their victims are afraid to speak out. We have a crisis line. It's not that women are silent. Hi. 
You have a couple options. It's just that instead of reporting to police, they turn to places like this. All women who experience violence go through these kind of questions. And the phone lines at this Vancouver Rape Crisis so Centre are open 24-7. When you get more than 4,000 calls a year, you have to always be training new volunteers like Zoe Penner. It's really hard to go through this. So we can look at some options together if you want. When women are uh, assaulted and calling and reaching out for help, that there's this sense of what do I do? What can I do? What are my options? What do I want to do? Irene Sepnopoulos Elheimer is the center's executive director. She says the almost 500,000 women sexually assaulted a year in Canada is an epidemic. If we actually do have a country that purports to uh, see women as equals, this shouldn't be happening. We know that violence against women is rooted. The root causes are women's inequality. And yet it is an everyday reality for many women. What's in the news? What's happening for women? Women are fighting back. At the Crisis Centre's daily meeting, the women share new strategies and tools to stop the violence. And it's this woman who actually made an um, Instagram account where women can share screenshots of abuse on dating platforms, and it's just, it's disgusting. Um, Knowing the survivors as well as Irene does, she says society needs to stop asking them to solve the problem by going to police. If you're thinking that each individual woman has to report in order for something to change, that's not going to happen. So you're saying we're asking the wrong question? Absolutely. What do you mean? Absolutely. Why is reporting the thing that's going to change the root causes of violence for women? Even if there is a good outcome at the very end, are we changing society? Are men going to be behaving differently? Will women be valued more? Will rape actually go down? One question Irene says we should be asking is where are the men? You know, if men stood up and said, um, this is unacceptable. We, do, we don't want our women in Canada experiencing sexual assault day in, day out, 24-7. If men were as outraged as women, I think maybe then women would say, you know what, I think I might have a fighting chance here. I think I might be believed. If violence against women is ever going to stop, it can't be up to the survivors. They've been through enough. It has to be up to all of us. And maybe recognizing the problem means we've at least taken the first step. In, in doing this interview, I had to tell my boys, they're six and eight, what had happened to me. And I feel like I'm doing them a service by talking to you right now. I just have so much heartache for so many victims out there who weren't able to get the closure that I've gotten or, or the verdict that I've gotten or weren't able to tell a soul. And I just want to, I just want to make it okay for our little girls in the future. Nick Purden, CBC News, Vancouver.